My goal with this screencast is that in just a little bit more time than we spent on the previous screencast, which was just the very super basic get a VPS up, to show you how to have almost paranoid security without doing anything complicated. Just keeping it simple, 10, 15 minutes here. The way that I'm gonna start is I'm, I'm already logged in actually, but I'm gonna click the login button here. And it's gonna take me to the create droplet page. So I'm gonna create my VPS. And uh, if you need to just go back and look at my previous video, it's in the link in the notes here, um, if you missed that. So I'm just gonna do the cheapest one, cheapest, well, best region or most available, whatever it is. Um, so this is where things start to get different. Instead of just clicking create droplet and then have a password emailed, I'm gonna add an SSH key. Now, in order to add an SSH key, I have to have an SSH key. And because I want this VPS to be secure, I'm gonna put a passphrase on it. And that's something that I, I don't need all my VPSs to be that secure that I even have a passphrase on my SSH key. But with this one, I want it to be almost paranoid level security. So I'm gonna create a new SSH key. So I'm gonna run SSH keygen, whoops. And I'm gonna name this key waffles. So I'm just copying my SSH, uh, my SSH path, calling this one waffles. And I'm going to enter in a passphrase instead of skipping the passphrase like I normally do. And I'd normally create something like, remember to take the trash out this Tuesday, exclamation mark. But instead I'm just gonna use secret because I'm gonna to have to type this a lot. And now here is a feature that's not very often used, which is the random art. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on random art in my SSH config. So visual host key equals yes. So now whenever I connect to a server, it's gonna show me the server's random art as well. And Hopefully, I'll get used to seeing that as I log into it multiple times, and if it suddenly changes, I'll be like, hmm, that's not the shape I remember. So anyway, back over here, um, I need to add in the SSH key, just the public part. So I'm going to do sshwaffles.pub, cat that out, and then just copy and paste the string. There we go, and this is specific key for test.me. It's the only place I'm gonna use this key. Alrighty. Now I'm going to click Create Droplet. This is gonna take 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 58 seconds, whatever it takes. And that finished. Here is my lovely IP address. So I'm gonna copy that. Let me go ahead and clear this terminal out here so there's not that junk. So I'm gonna do SSH, root is the username of course, at that IP address, and then I'm going to specify the identity file because there's no password. And it happens to be, you can tell I tried this tutorial before and botched it, so I'm doing it again. Um, but I give it the path to my SSH key, and I just hit enter, and now it's showing me this is the art for the server. So every time I connect, because I turned on that SSH option, I'm going to see this art for the server that kind of looks like, I don't know, maybe a, a Rambo character or something. So um, this is the first time I've ever connected. So yes, I'm sure I want to connect. And now I need to enter in the passphrase for the SSH key, which is on my laptop, right? So I enter in secret. And boom. Now I'm going to clear this out. Here I am in the server. The very first thing that I'm going to do sudo apt get install fail to ban and dash y yes for a pre yes so the reason i want to install fail to ban is because it automatically blocks any attempts from a botnet that's uh trying to get in via ssh that'll just try you know common passwords like root and secret you know etc um so it'll just automatically block those types of uh, attacks um, using IP tables. So I clear that out. All right, now the very next thing I'm gonna do is I don't want root to even be able to log into this box. So I'm gonna add a user strongbad 
and let's see, I'm going to give him the password change me rsn, change me rsn, and strong bet. This you don't really have to fill out, but I'm going to fill it out anyway. Okay, so now here I am. I've created the user strong bet. I also want to add that user to the sudo group. So I run the same command, but then add the group that I want to add him to at the end. Um, on some systems, that would be wheel instead of sudo. Okay, now he's been added. That means that I should be able to log out of the remote system. So exit. Now I'm back on my laptop again. And now I'm going to log back in. Actually, I'm not going to log in. I'm going to copy over that key file um, to the system so that I can log in with that user with the key without the password. So I'm only going to have to enter in the password once. So uh, first, I need to make sure that SSH copy ID is installed. It's installed by default on most Linux systems, but on Mac you have to install it. Um, and then I'm going to use it. So this is actually all the right information here. So I just need to specify dash I, give it the identity file, and then the username and the server that I'm copying it to. It's going to attempt to log in. It's going to ask me for the user's password. I see my little Mega Man guy there again. I know this is the right server. So that's change me RSN. All right, it's copied that key over. Now I don't need to use that um, user password to log in ever again. I'll log in only with my key and my passphrase. So since I've got that copied over, I'm going to edit my SSH config again. And I'm going to go ahead and add a configuration for that host. Oh, I haven't changed the port yet. I'll do that in just a moment. So I've got the IP address, the username that I want to use, and the identity file that I want to use. Now I'll just copy the uh, IP address again. Now I can just do SSH and that IP address, and it knows I want to log in as that user with that key. I just type in secret, which is my passphrase, and boom, now I'm logged in as Strongbad. So the next thing to do is to disable root login. So I'm going to sudo vim etsy ssh sshd config and now I type in my user password, change me rsn. I'm going to change ssh to be on port 4242. You can leave it to 22, that's fine. It's just, uh, you know, giving it any different port makes it a little bit more, makes it less susceptible to bots just like probing you for you know whatever because once they find one of the popular ports then they'll start scanning all the other ones um, so it doesn't matter this is going to be way secure they get scanned all day long um, but I'll just go ahead and change it anyway permit root login no way we do not want to allow root to log in only want to allow users to log in and um, we do not want to where is it at okay there we go Password authentication, we want to change to no. So not only can root log in, but no user can log in using a password. They have to have a key file. All right, so now that that's done, I should be able to log out. And then I'm going to try logging in as root again with my key file. And, oh, you know what? I forgot to restart the service. So let me do sudo service ssh restart. Excellent. Okay. Now, you always got to test the thing you think you're doing to make sure it's working, working right? So now I'm going to try logging in again as root, and it tells me the connection's refused because the port has changed. So I'll add the port that I want, and then ask me for my key, and denied. Won't let me log in, even though I've got the right key. So now, if I try logging in as strong, bad, and I'm on the right port, but I'm not using the key. It's not even going to ask me for a password. Oh, it already knows that I want to use that key because I set it up in my SSH config. But anyway, um, if I, it, let's say I give it the wrong, let me exit out of here again. Let's say I give it the wrong key file. So let's say I were to give it my normal key file. Oh, nope, it's not even going to let me do that. So none of that matters. Um, but the point was, it I, I can't log in 
Yeah, I'll just go ahead and change it here. There we go. I, I want to prove it to you. I just want to prove it. So finally, boom, cannot log in because I don't have a key file. Excellent. So it doesn't even ask me for a password. So now I'll set this up with um, port 4242. So now I'm back to where all I got to do is use the IP address and I can get in. And it's going to ask me for the secret. Now, something that I've done um, that probably wouldn't be done on your installation of OS X is I've disabled um, key caching. So every single time I log into that server, it's always going to ask me what the key's passphrase is. And I like that because if I'm going to be paranoid secure, I might as well be paranoid secure, right? So I'll show you how to do that. It's actually, let's see, is it this command? Nope. Unload dash W. There we go. So it's this command right here, and you can find that in the um, the, the notes. Um, the unload dash W means unload the service and save that the service should be disabled so it doesn't load on reboot. Now when I enter in this, um, it might or might not give me an error saying it's already unloaded. Okay, yeah, so it's saying it's already unloaded anyway because I had already unloaded it. Well, that's fine. Um, so it's going to ask me for that passphrase every single time, which means that even if my laptop is stolen from me, someone can still not enter into that server because they would have to know my passphrase. So they pretty much have to have a gun on my head to get into this thing or have a gun to somebody's head over at the, um, the data center, right? Or there'd have to be a bug in the API um, for DigitalOcean that somehow allows them to get in. But I think those are all pretty unlikely scenarios. Okay, so now I'm into the box. The next thing that I want to do now that I've disabled root login is I want to get all the system updates. So apt get update, apt get upgrade dash y. Okay, that's going to take a minute once I type in my change me rsn. Okay, that finished the updates. I'm going to clear that out. Now, um, one thing that I don't normally do um, but I'll, I'll do for this demonstration is I'll also uh, I'll enable the UFW firewall that Ubuntu comes with. So I'll do sudo UFW enable. Um, and this says it will disrupt existing connections. So I'll say no, because first I want to do sudo UFW allow 4242 TCP. Now I'll enable it. All right. So now the UFW firewall is enabled. So anything that somebody tries to, to access is just going to drop. So like if I were to, um, let me open up another tab here and just curl that IP address. It's just going to sit there and hang because it's not going to get like no bad requests and it's not going to get, yeah, I'm here because we're not running anything on HTTP right yet. It's just going to hang there and wait until it times out because it's not getting a response. So that's a little bit better than if we disable the firewall. Then you know, failed to connect, connection refused, you know that that server exists. When we got the firewall turned on, you can't even tell that the server exists. Except that UFW by default leaves ping open, which means that if I ping the IP address, I can still see it. So we're going to go ghost. I'm back on the server in this tab. I'm going to open up Etsy. I think it's UFW before dot rules, I hope. Yeah, OK. So I need to sudo that. So I'm going to open up this file. And then I'm going to do a search and replace for accept. Switch it to drop globally, but um, ask to confirm. And I'm not worried about these first couple here. We want to always allow loopback. That's super important. We always want to allow connections already in place. ICMP codes, that's ping. So I'm going to hit Y. I was hitting uh, N for no or next. Now I'm going to hit Y to change accept to drop. And I'm going to do it for the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. All the ones that are ICMP or ping related, I'm going to drop them all. All right, now I'm not going to change anything else. 
just those ones. Okay, write and quit, sudo ufw reload. Firewall has been reloaded. Okay, now if I ping the server, it's ghosted. Can't even tell if the server's there. Behaves as if it's not even online. Okay, so the only way that you can tell is if you hit port 4242 with SSH. Other than that, this thing's silent. And to prove it, I'm going to do netstat peanut. Okay, you can see here that it's listening on all IPv4 addresses, port 4242. It's listening on the specific external IPv4 address on port 4242. And it's listening on all IPv6 addresses on 4242. Other than that, there's nothing listening. If you're getting a different experience, you should switch VPS providers because they shouldn't come preloaded with a bunch of crap that you don't understand, right? Now, at this point, as long as I don't install WordPress or PHP on here, any crazy crap like that, it's completely safe. The problem is, of course, I do want to run services on this. So if I wanted to run like an HTTP server, I would do sudo ufw allow. Uh, I can just type HTTP or HTTPS. Um, so I think Think, I think I've concluded here, except that I should do shutdown dash r now um, and reboot it so that all of those security updates take place, and all that. So it's going to kick me off. And then while it's doing that, I'm just going to review my notes real quick and make sure I covered everything. So I'll just make sure that I can connect still. Put in my secret. Excellent. All right. So I looked over my notes and yeah, I think I covered everything. This is a secure setup. Aside from gun to head, corporate espionage, uh, major security bugs in TLS, SSL, or SSH, and major security bugs in the VPS provider API, there's no unauthorized access to this box. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.